Hey guys, we're here with Jeremiah from Wild Arrow Archery. Wild Arrow is a archery pro shop here in Centerville, Utah. And Jeremiah is gonna help me set up my new Hoyt RX3 today. I'm sure if you've seen any of our bow builds, you've seen Jeremiah. So welcome back to the video. Thank you. And uh, what are we gonna do today on this thing? So we're gonna get you dialed in with this. We're gonna mount your sight, uh, level that up, get your rest installed, and then we're gonna get this thing paper tuned today so you can you can take it out and start shooting some arrows out of it. So we'll get it done and get you dialed in quick. Sweet. So guys, I am a left-handed shooter. It took me a while to get my new bow, so this is long overdue. I'm excited to get this thing set up. We're just gonna walk you through it step by step on how to set up your bow from start to finish. We'll run that same Hoyt Ultra S. That seems to be working yeah, well. I love that. Yeah, it's just, they're tough to beat. So we'll go get one of those mounted on. We're gonna check camp sync. And then what, what draw length have you been running on your Defiant? 27. 27, okay, perfect. So we'll adjust this down. It's at 27 and a half right now from the factory. Mm -hmm. We'll turn it down to a 27 and then we're gonna check cam sync to make sure that that's good. And then we'll uh, we'll get everything mounted on and get you shooting. Good thing you're lefty, that's about all I have in right now. It's been here since like September. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I know, I keep seeing you shoot your Defiant in all your hunts. Dude, and, and every time I do, I'm just like, this is why I love this bow. So this is the Hoyt Ultra Rest. So Quality Archery Designs technically is, is the manufacturer who makes it, but they've teamed up with Hoyt um, and you know, on some of the previous videos, we've kind of showed this, mm -hmm. but there's an optimal launcher angle with this rest. When you bolt it to the riser, when you've come to full draw, you want this launcher to be at a 90 degrees to the string. So what's nice with the Hoyt uh, version is the engineers have built this mount bracket. When I tighten this to the riser, it just automatically aligns the launcher angle. Now you mm -hmm. still have to adjust what they call center shot and then the vertical adjustment on the rest but it's getting the launcher angle optimal when you just tighten and bolt it on. So the other big advantage I like with these rests too is, and this doesn't always happen, but say for example, if you get a rest that gets loose and it slides or shifts, you don't know where, where it goes, right? Mm -hmm. With this model, if I put this on the bow, tightened it, tuned it and shot everything, I could unbolt it and then bolt it right back in. It goes to the exact same spot every time. It can't, it can't just be adjusted. Mm -hmm. Every one of these is gonna have a little packet here. And in the packet, it's got a couple accessories here. It's got an extra little Hoyt decal. It comes with one on the rest, but a lot of times when you pull those off, they don't like to stick. Um, this has a football clamp system. So if a guy is installing it on a certain bow um, that he doesn't have a bow press, that, that he can't run the put the down cable under the strands of the string, this is a, a quick alternative. I'm not a big fan of these. A lot of times I have seen them cut strings and cables on bows, so you gotta be careful. But the nice thing about the Hoyt is they've, um, with this new yoke system, you don't have to have a bow press to be able to serve it into the down cable now. I love to use this every time. This is the little spacer. What it does is there's two mount positions here. If you just put it on normal, it actually shifts the rest forward against the riser, or you can use the spacer and it shifts the rest back. And every time it seems like we shift the rest back, it changes kind of the launch point of the arrow mm -hmm. off the rest and it seems to work better every time. So pretty much every bow we set up, we use this, we use this spacer. spacer. Yeah. So this is a special bolt that they send with the rest that once you tighten it down, it just locks it in there. Yeah, so when you tighten that down, that plastic spacer is sitting against this metal plate, so the rest cannot shift up or down at all. It just locks it in there. Now I bolted it on though, I still have to adjust the center shot left and right to get that aligned. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times these will come to, they'll come out just a little bit from the factory, whether it's a left or right-handed bow. They don't shift out a lot, about a 16th of an inch is kind of optimal. It's kind of hard to get a visual alignment of center shot on the carbons because the risers, they're not square. like. It's a good visual reference to kind of line it this way, but risers are not perfectly square, with, especially at the carbons, you see the tubes weave. And so, and from static to full draw, these risers, believe it or not, actually flex a little bit. I mean, it's, they're engineered that way. So 
what I like to do when I'm kind of setting the center shot on the rest is I'm using this trough as a reference here for the launcher. And what I really like to look at is making sure that the launcher itself is, if I got the two prongs, that it's e hitting the rubber equally on each side. Mm -hmm. If it's hitting more on this side versus the other, that's kind of what I've been using as a visual reference for center shot. And it seems to be working really well for us there. It was just a hair on that right edge. I'll just snug that down. And when I push it here, I can kind of look underneath and I can see that the prongs are perfectly uh, uh, far as left to right on that rubber pad. It's about as close as you can get. So that's where I'll start the center shot for you. With the newer cams on the RX3s, the knocking point is actually now centered in the bow itself and the grip is lower. So you get actually better knock travel because the cams are equal top mm -hmm. and bottom. But what I've been kind of finding for whatever reason, I like to center the rest slightly above just a little bit higher seems to be a little more of a sweet spot for tuning for some reason so we're just gonna right now even before we put in a loop on i'm just gonna loosen this vertical adjustment i'm gonna bump it up just, not a lot just a little bit i still like to have some vertical adjustment if need be but if you look here underneath i've got a little bit of a gap from that launcher to that rubber pad oh yeah and uh, i mean we tuned them low but Seems like if I just start them off a little higher, it seems to be working really well. Start there. I'm gonna take it out really quick, adjust it down to 27, and then check cam sync before we do anything else. The material they're using in here is very abrasion resistant. So if you're hiking and you're rubbing the string through the brush or on your pack, it really helps with that abrasion, but it has a little bit more stretch and a little bit more creep. That's why you gotta break it in. When you go to a higher grade material, um, it has a lot less stretch and less creep. So when you put it on a tune it, it holds the tune, but it's not as abrasion resistant. So if guys are hiking and they're rubbing this string on their pant leg or through the brush or on their pack, you'll start to see it phrase out faster. Mm -hmm. So there's kind of a pro and con with strings yeah. and cables. It's like, well, you gotta go through a break-in period with these, but once you do, that the abrasion resistance, they'll make them last a little bit longer versus the higher end strings, they don't, if you don't take care of them, they don't last as long, but you don't have to reset or retune. They'll hold the tune for a much longer mm -hmm. period of time. So. And then you can kind of look underneath how they designed it. See, you can see A, B, C, all the way matters. over. Yeah. But once they've kind of good design where once you can see E, you know that's in the right position there. I just rotated a half inch shorter and then we'll just tighten this back down. So you want this letter to match that letter? Yep. So the module on the cam has to match the, the post. And you, you could actually kind of play around with that. It changes the let off. I see guys do it. I don't usually recommend it, but yeah, if you're running, because this bow right now has um, technically 85% let off mods, mm -hmm. you can swap out and get 80% mods if you if you wanted those. And then they also make an aftermarket post that goes here that's machined aluminum. They're a little bit bigger and thicker that actually will take the bow clear down to a 75% let off if you choose to. Um, and so for certain states, depending on where you're hunting, yeah. there are some states that you cannot use 85% yeah. in, so you gotta be careful on those. Um, Idaho, Colorado, I'm pretty sure uh, even Montana now. So with these bows, and you, the, how you can identify the difference in the modules is the 80% mods are, are gonna be this silver or gray mm -hmm. color, and the 85s are black. black. But it marks it on there. You can see where it says ZT2, mm -hmm. that's the cam size, BL for bottom left, and then the 80% is the let off. Yeah. And so that you can kind of look and tell just by looking at the bow, but now you're 80% let off there. Yeah, check that out guys. Um, I got lucky, he had these in his shop, 80% let off. So that way I can legally hunt in Colorado and Idaho. Some states have different rules and regulations on that. You should definitely look ahead before you go. But I decided as I'm shooting this for the first time, let's just start yeah. with 80, get me comfortable that way and I'll be ready to rock and roll because I do plan on hunting Colorado. Right. Yeah, and, and a lot of guys don't understand what let off really is, right? So say for example, this is a 70 pound bow. So you pull the max weight at 70 and the bow breaks over. Back of the wall, you're you're letting off 80% of the total weight. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> technically you're holding 20, right? So 20% of 70, you're holding about 14 pounds back. When you go to 85%, you're, you're holding less weight back here when you yeah. get the bow back. and so. Um, but that's kind of what, how the let off works on those bows, but yeah.
you'll cool. you'll like it. It'll feel good. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm happy to start that way. I yeah. get used to it that way. I get comfortable and confident with it at 80, and then yeah. that way I could take that bow to all the different states. For sure. Have. Yeah, it should be good. So what I'm going to do next is uh, just check cam sync. So we've adjusted, we're left at a max poundage. It's just already maxed out from the factory. We've adjusted to 27 mm -hmm. inches, which is your draw. And then what I'm going to do is use this scale. This is a quick, easy way to do it. You got to be careful for guys that are pulling these at home. If you twist the bow this way, uh, you can derail the bow pretty easily. So you got to make sure you kind of stay here and put, just pull straight back toward you. But what I'm looking for is to make sure that these posts are hitting equally. And right now you can see your top cam is out. So see in the bottom, yep, you see that little post? See how there's a gap up on top there? Yeah. That is cam sync, okay? And the bottom pegs are actually hitting the cable. And so before I wanna, before I do anything with like a knocking position here, I'm gonna make sure that that cam sync is, is perfect. And, and if anything, actually make this peg hit slightly, slightly ahead of the bottom. Mm -hmm. And so we're gonna press it. I'm gonna add some twists into the top yokes. So with these newer Hoyts, you really don't wanna twist this lower yoke system here. You want this to stay as square as possible. If you twist these down here, mm -hmm. it's not terrible. What happens is this ends up twisting a little bit. And so when you draw, you get this dual peg and you'll kind of feel like a double click, like a, you'll feel like dunk, boom, dunk. boom. Yeah, exactly right. And so usually to fix cam sync, what we want to do is just twist these upper yokes. But you got to be careful uh, when, you, when you're twisting those, because when you twist these yokes, not only you're affecting cam sync, but you're affecting technically the top cam lean. This is yoke tuning, okay? So right now what I'm going to do is put equal twists in. I'm going to do full, two full twists on the right and two full twists on the left to try to keep it as square as possible. Mm -hmm. And then when we start paper tuning, if I need to start steering that cam a little left, a little right, I can do like half in here and half out here to try to keep them as balanced as possible. So stuff's way beyond me, <laughs> way beyond me. By the way, if anybody's interested in getting a bow set up, people will actually lately have been flying here to Utah to have Jeremiah set up their bow. Uh, from start to finish. So if someone's interested in that, what would they do? Call you and make an appointment? Yeah, we've had guys call, um, make appointments, kind of tell us what they need or want done. And then we kind of, we fit them into our busy schedule. It's mm -hmm. been, uh, it's been a lot, you know, we got a lot of bow work, but yeah, guys that are willing to travel in uh, and want, you know, kind of want us to go through and get them dialed in the same way. It is a service that we offer. They just got to contact us and get them set up pretty quick. So I'll put the link to their social media accounts and their phone number down in the description box for you guys. Threw a couple twists in there. Let's see what uh, this cam sync looks like now. We're close. I'm going to do just a little bit more. You can see they're almost perfectly synced mm -hmm. there. So I'm just going to do another half and each side is all not a lot. Yeah, how would a guy ever learn all this, you know? A lot of years of experience, man. That's, uh, and not only that, but <laughs> every bow is different. Like working mm -hmm. on a Hoyt or Matthew, like you kind of, once you kind of get the basics down, but yeah, every bow is a little different of how they like to tune. And I, I see this all the time. Um, you know, you get a lot of guys that, that try to do it at home. And, and, and the, what they end up doing is, trying to adjust everything in the rest because they don't have a bow press. And I tell guys all the time, if you do not have a bow press, just adjusting the rest is putting a bandaid on really what's going on. 90% of the tuning of any compound bow is in your strings and cables. It affects, like on this bow, it's gonna affect <clears throat> poundage, cam sink, cam lean, uh, knocking, all those things are string and cable related. So for a guy that's at home, He'll go watch a video and then he'll he'll adjust his rest to get the result that he wants. But then he'll come in and go, man, like I get a good paper tune, yeah. but my bow is shooting way off. And he's there's something else he's fighting mechanically mm -hmm. with the bow. But guys at home, the only thing they can do is is do a rest yeah. adjustment. So you got to have the right tools. It's like a good car mechanic, man. Like if you don't have the right tools to work on it, good luck. So yeah. perfect. So it hits a little sooner. On yeah, the top. see how it pushes into there just yeah. a little tiny bit. That is, that's about right where we want to start that right there. Looks good. We'll check the scale and kind of see what we're hitting poundage. 71. Yep, 71 pounds. And you might lose that pound as your strings and cables settle just a little bit. 
So this little cable here, this is what's nice about Hoyt's new cable system. You can just slide it there and just pull it up. And now we, what we always like to do is always tie and serve underneath. And then once we adjust your rest timing, I will actually at the very end, I'm gonna cut and burn this cable to where that cable is locked in. It's held in by a set screw up here and it's tied and cut and burned down here. So if you're hiking and you catch this on something, you would have to, you'd have to you break have to that. On. We're gonna add the felt to the rest. We'll just line the rest. And we mm -hmm. always like to tie them in. Not only does it look good, but this felt sometimes has a hard time sticking and staying on. If you don't tie it, it'll peel off pretty yeah. quick. So once you kind of so get So that's good. adhesive as is. Yeah, so I peeled off the back and then you can kind of see as, as I put it on, I tried to center that as best I could on the trough. Mm -hmm. And then we're just gonna roll this kind of down. Mm -hmm. When, uh, you know, before you fletch arrows, you could actually try to find that spine by shooting bare shafts. And sometimes I think you can get too carried away with over analyzing I'm all the little guy. details. You, yeah. you know me, I just kind of like give my stuff and go. Overhand knot, I'll just cut and burn that. Sink looks good. We got the kind of the rest installed, felt tied in that. So next step, I'm gonna actually add the string loop. Uh, we're gonna use a T-square to kind of figure out the level and then I'm gonna do some tie-ins and then the loop. And then after that, we'll set rest time and we'll actually shoot it through paper a little bit. T-squares work really good for establishing knocking position. And when you clip this on fully, what you wanna do is just slowly slide that front piece down until it sits perfectly on the rest and then you can kind of see it has the numbers here and tells you the height position of the knock. Uh, and certain bows, like don't freak out. The guys will do this and then they'll call them. And sometimes your area will have to sit a little high. That's just based off the model of the bow or the rest as a combo. So if it's not perfectly level, that's pretty normal. It just depends on the bow. Sometimes they actually like to tune pretty knock high. I've had a bow in the past for whatever reason I actually tuned a hair knock low, but it shot great. So this never has to be in an exact position that can actually vary from bow to bow there. So, but we'll cut a loop and uh, get that tied on next. It's in right in the heart of grizzly country and Arizona. Yeah. I might try it. I want to hunt my kill so bad. Like, yeah. So what we've done is I had this level and then I actually started the bottom loop a little low so I could actually have room for tie-in to get kind of the level point. And then I'm gonna do a top tie-in here. I've shot it both ways with it with just, I'm always about having a bottom tie-in, but I've shot my bow a lot with and without the top. Um, kind of a personal preference, I think. It depends on the knock travel and the knock pinch of certain bows, but when you do that, you wanna be able to have just a little bit of play there. Um, because as you draw back, that string's gonna kind of pinch together. So we're gonna start this here and then I'm gonna do another tie-in right above that to kind of make it equal. Jeremiah does all the work, I eat pistachios. <laughs> <laughs> Making me hungry just sitting over here. I'll just give you one of those. You want one? Oh yeah. <laughs> if I start eating those, I'm gonna stop working on your bow though. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, we'll never Not unless you that. keep cracking them like that. You just keep feeding me <laughs> and I'll keep working. <laughs> I pay him in pistachios. That's right. And he said yesterday you got a bag of the ones that are already cracked for you. Yeah, when when they're that easy to access, you just the whole bag was whole gone bag. so so fast. I don't think you're supposed to eat things. that many. Oh yeah, like that whole it was just a bag like this it was like ten bucks. I mean, yeah, was, this one was, was five bucks, and I'm burn right through it. Mm -hmm. Nice, cool. This new vein you guys are rocking is a good vein. The new one from A and E. Look and at that. Uh, my new arrow setup, guys. Yeah. And then we flushed it. There's a special jig we use that's called True Helical, mm -hmm. and they stabilize and shoot so well. So these things are going to be darts for you, man. I oh, yeah, have never had the helical. Mine are always just, yeah. you know, like that. Yeah, that's the, the blazer slide offset. So damn, these are sweet. Yep. Get these all squared up here. This little tool, this little chamfer tool comes with these. And uh, 
it squirt. Not only does it square the front, but then when you go to put inserts and fill tips in, it just squares them up a little bit better. So while we we're uh, while we got your arrows, uh, we got them caught inserted. They're just going to dry. It takes about 15 minutes. I figure we'll go ahead and get this new black gold bolted on and. and get it leveled up because really out of the package these don't get leveled mm -hmm. at all and so we'll go bolt this on level and then what i'll do is uh i'll show you how to work this micro adjust system on there and then once we get all that done your arrows should be ready to shoot and so then we can do some paper tuning there so they come with all these sight tapes these these are actually really accurate i use these quite often on my setups mm -hmm. you just shoot your bow through the chronograph and then select whatever speed correlates Sometimes you get these black lines that kind of blur together, especially early morning, late evening, they're harder to see. Mm -hmm. The Archer's Advantage tapes, you can customize the colors on them a little bit easier. Oh, that's so, cool. But we use these as a setup tape to verify your marks at distance. And then once we know what marks you're working off of, then we do the Archer's Advantage. So, But this new site's pretty similar to what you've been using from these guys. So as far as this slide here, that's all the same. It does have micro adjust windage and elevation now. So. Kind of what I've been telling customers when you're looking at buying equipment and, and wondering why you should spend the extra money on micro adjust, there's two main reasons really. Number one is definitely the ease of sighting in. So when you go to loosen this here, you loosen that, and then the knob on the side, it, you, you know, if you turn it left or right, you can see that and it's nice and oh, yeah. you can hear the click. Mm -hmm. So it's really nice and precise. But the other advantage of, of paying the extra money for micro adjust is if this comes loose or this screw backs completely out, I mean, it'll wiggle, but this cannot slide or shift around. The only way that this gets moved is not only does this have to become loose, but then this has to be clicked. Mm. How hard is it to? Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. Cause before, and I've shot this, this brand of sight for what, four or five years. Yeah, yeah. If that one bolt came loose, that thing just like, so you I could, mean, it could just fall off. I've had guys lose whole scopes before. Really? Um, now, how the micro adjust works, um, if you can kind of see here, see how your, your pins are gapped pretty high up in the housing? Mm -hmm. I like my pins to start quite a bit lower. Matter of fact, my 50 yard pin, I get it pretty close to my level bubble. I do that for two reasons. Number one, anything beyond 50, when you slide, it's always that bottom pin, right? Yep. Watching that level bubble with your peripheral vision is huge, especially at distance. And so I see guys all the time that will leave their, their bottom pin up high off the bubble. Well, what happens with that, when you're aiming at distance, you're trying to look at the pin on the target, and then you got to look at your bubble mm -hmm. and then look back up. If you close that gap from your bottom pin to your bubble, you can see the bubble way better with your peripheral vision and it, it'll help you aim better at long distances. The other thing that, that helps with it too though is the lower you start these pins down in the housing, the, the higher the housing starts. Yeah. So you'll actually get more travel and clearance that way. So by, yeah, if anybody's running these sites, I see them all the time, guys come in and their pins are way stacked the towards the top, but then their scope's way down. It needs to be opposite. The pins need to be as low as they can and then the housing will come up and it works way better that way. How it's going to work um, is it's going to be the same size Allen key that you've always used on your other ones. Mm -hmm. And the other one you've used in the past, which is the Wild Arrow Edition, still a nice micro adjust. You would loosen the pin and you just twist that knob and tighten it. And it actually works really well. But with this new micro drive system, it's pretty slick. So each pin it has two connection points to the housing now. Okay, The lower pin, the inside pin, is what actually kind of locks the pin to the housing. But this set screw here is what engages the micro drive. And so how you'd want to, say we want to move the bottom pin down, okay? Mm -hmm. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the wrench in here. I'm going to do, there's a half, one, half, two full turns. That two full turns is right where you want to be. And then the inside, the lower pin, you want to do one full turn out. So there's half, one, okay? So at that point, now you should have, by backing this out two turns and loosening that it's engaged this so you see this extra little knob that they have mm -hmm. down here now only thing you're going to do is just twist that oh, and you can nice. see that pin just and it's clicks too so you yep. can count the amount of clicks you go down and so we're going to kind of run that pin down and we're going to kind of start it that's pretty dang close right there kind of a yeah. good starting point still gives you a little bit of room if you need to but 
The other thing you can probably see now too, now that it's out of the package, see how much thinner it is towards the end of that pin? Mm -hmm. So again, we were talking about the aiming at longer distances is so much cleaner with that now. That's right. This is called the new Pro is what this one is, so. Black Gold Pro? Yeah. Check it out, guys. Been using the uh, Black Gold, I had the Ascent. Yep. Is that what it is called? Yeah, the Ascent, and then we, I think last year we had to run the Wild Arrow Wild Edition, Arrow which Edition. was a kind of a custom site that mm -hmm. we had them build for us, and then, this year they came out with the new Pro, which has uh, been one of our top sellers. So now what we're gonna do is do the same thing. So we moved the bottom pin down, but we want the other two pins to follow. So you can see their big gap. And you usually run 30, 40, 50, right? 30, on your 40. pins. That's how I like to run mine too. So we're gonna now uh, adjust both those pins and we can do it at the same time. So if you wanna move all the pins at once, same thing, we're gonna put the wrench in. There's half one, half two, same thing here half one, half two, and then we're just gonna loosen the inside uh, set, you know, pin, just one full turn is really all you need to do, and just like so. Now, if we go back to your micro adjust knob here, mm -hmm. you can see both pins are now moving equally together. Oh, cool. What I've been telling guys is just don't over tighten this, mm -hmm. especially this, um, this pin engagement here for the micro drive. A lot of guys have that mentality, is tighter is better, and on this, it's not the case. So the only thing you gotta do, so if you kind of look, the gap that I've set from 40 to 50, I think is gonna be pretty close for you there. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna lock in that 40 yard pin, that middle red pin, and the only thing I'm gonna do is two turns back in to the to the micro adjust, and then the inside pin here, same thing, just, just medium pressures all mm -hmm. these pins take. But now what I'm gonna do is continue to bring that, that 30 yard pin down and kind of get closer to that. So if you can kind of see, that gap where we've started as far as the pins go, mm -hmm. your 30, 40, 50. And I kind of like to start my 30 yard pin almost centered in the housing. Yeah, if you kind of think of that center line of the housing, and then same thing, I'll just re-engage this, just tighten down that, just barely snug it, and then snug this one up, and that's how you do it, so. Cool. Yeah, once you get out on the range and start adjusting that, it's so slick now, so. Yeah, once that's bolted on and tight, um, it has this other white piece of paper here. This is um, this is telling you about your third axis screw to adjust underneath there. Um, in order to pivot this site for third axis, third axis is when we're pivoting the site this way. Basically, that what that's warning guys is to not over tighten the screw. What happens is guys will level their site and they go home. Again, everyone has a mentality, tighter's better, right? Well, they'll see that and not know what it's for and tighten it. Well, when they tighten that, it actually moves third axis and now their third axis is way out. Yeah, I mean, there's certain things you definitely wanna make sure are tight, like these two screws for your first axis, your windage elevation, that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. But just be aware of what what guys are tightening at home because <laughs> we, we see that guys come in all the time where they've over tightened that. What we're doing with this level here, hooking it to the sight bracket, this this piece here, we're, we're Kind of assuming a little bit here, but we're assuming that where the mount plate sits for the site against the riser is a perfectly square. So this, we are assuming that this two plates from your rest and site is a perfectly vertical plane of the bow. And then usually with most site manufacturers now, they're building such good machine tolerances that this block here is at a perfect square at 90. And so if you look over on this side, you can see how this bubble is leaning to the left a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is just tighten this down. My, it's nice to have a, a bow vise to be able to do this, but right there is telling me that uh, the bubble is in the middle. That's telling me that that bow is perfectly as level as left to right as you're gonna get there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll this site all the way down to the bottom, and I'm gonna hook the second level on. I don't care about the level bubble that's in the scope. Only thing I care about is first axis, and so, this is, a, this is a good example to kind of use um, where a lot of guys at home don't, that don't know how to quite level perfectly. A lot of times when they do this, the first thing they look at is the bubble and the scope. That's your second axis. What's more important and what you gotta set the first is your first axis, which is this block here. We're basically making sure that this block is now perfectly parallel to the bow. And right now you can see how I have this hooked on. You see how that bubble, it's not far off, but it's to that left edge. Yep. If you were to leave it like that, or some sites come from the factory that are way out, as you slide down, your sight pins actually are gonna slide at an angle. 
And so guys will go side in 20 yeah. and they're it good and they go to 70 and they're hitting way off or left or right and they, get, they won't figure out why. It's usually that first axis. Now the other thing I kind of forgot to tell you about this Pro is um, it actually has micro adjust on the first axis as well. And so when you loosen this, you can see there's a little tiny silver set screw uh -huh. that's right there. And you can tighten or loosen that. And what that does is that actually pivots that first axis left to right to micro adjust. If you kind of look there, I got the bow leveled in the vise here. And then see how that bubble is now dead center. Mm -hmm. That's telling me that your first axis is, is perfect. So I'm just going to go ahead and tighten this back down. Snug those up. And you can go pretty snug on these. You don't want these to come loose. Now that we have that set, we're going to take the level off the first axis so I have room to get to the second axis there. And uh, you can see how far that bubble's hanging to the right. So we're going to loosen this screw here. There we go. So when I kind of did that, it shifted the bow. So I'm going to go back, make sure that the bow is perfectly level here again. And then we're going to just softly I usually like to put the wrench in right there and just push on it just a little bit until we get that ring to come in perfect. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yep. Yeah. Yep. See how it's centered up. So once we get that re-centered, then we're just going to go ahead and tighten those two back and then I'll throw the, this level back on just as a quick reference and just double check to make sure that the bows level first axis and second axis is all set. And then we can go look at third axis really quick. What do you see? What do you see? So what I'm doing is just, I usually pull these back right handed, but since you're lefty, this is easier for me. <laughs> As I pull it down on that, you know, cause we set cam sync earlier, I'm watching just the rest timing. And we have a draw board that we do that in and it's a good tool, but this way is just faster and easier. So you're I'm, just seeing at what point it pulls that the rest up. Mm -hmm. so i keep shortening this down mm -hmm. and then eventually when i pull this down you'll see that i pull that where you can watch your rest yeah see there how it engaged mm -hmm. and then it comes up and it's full and then i kind of barely let into the let off there so i'm just kind of watching that rest timing to get it as close as possible i left a little bit there in case i need to micro adjust that timing mm -hmm. before i fully cut and burn that but let me go grab one of your arrows and we'll come back, we'll double check paper tune, and if that's good, the last step will get your peep sight dialed, so. Cool, man. It's looking good, it sure feels good. It's light when there's not much on there, but I do have a, a first light quiver at my house I'm gonna put on there, so it'll match the camo. But yeah, these guys are getting it dialed in. Once we get it ready and set up and tuned, I'll be able to just hit the range and sight it in, and this will be the bow I'm hunting with for 2019 season. Um, draw back, look, don't fire until I tell you to. I just want to make sure everything looks good before you have full draw. And then if it looks good, I'll let you release into the paper there. So. It's my first time drawing this bow back. Yeah, looks good. Draw length solid. So aim a little lower, so bring, keep bringing that down. All right there, perfect. Yeah, go ahead and, go ahead and send one. little knock right there we can make a couple little adjustments so that tear right there huh? tells yep. you knock right yep so the front of there i went in the back there the veins came to the right there and so this is the stage of the kind of custom fitting this boat to your shooting style mm -hmm. too there's a lot of little variables that will cause that to change and so um one nice thing about the new rx3s that we've been doing a lot is in their new grip system uh it felt so different yeah, it's, it's thin it's like yeah. narrow it's really flat on the back but what's nice is it's actually a tunable grip it's the first year hoyt's ever came out with this system so what happens is when we go through to teach you how to shoot different bows like if you were to shoot you know i tell guys if you were to shoot like an elite or a primer matthews i know it sounds funny but they all kind of like a different grip pressure mm -hmm. of how you naturally put your hand into the riser well with this new hoyt grip what we're going to do is actually shift the grip to the right and so what it's going to do is put more pressure on that side of the bow naturally without you having to change your comfortable grip position there the nice thing is that since hoyt has this adjustable grip we might as well take advantage of it so when you pop that off you can see that metal plate that's there yeah and there is three positions. You have the square or neutral where it comes from the factory, and you can see you can shift it to the left mm -hmm. or to the right. And so because of the tear direction you have, 
we need to apply more pressure on this side of the riser of the bow. So we're gonna take this plate and shift it this direction. So only thing we're gonna do at this point is fine tune through paper. We want mm -hmm. the paper tune perfectly for us. And again, this is where having a bow press is handy because most guys that go paper tune at home, say we got that knock right tear, right? Mm -hmm. I see two things happen with that all the time. One, guys don't know it's them that's causing that. They think it's bow related. And the only thing that guys know how to do at home is adjust the rest. So what guys would do is I could make that paper tune go away by simply adjusting the rest. Mm -hmm. But I know that's not the correct way to do it. That's putting a bandaid on what's happening. So this is kind of where setting this bow to your hand and knowing that I'm not really gonna mess with the center shot too much. I know that's kind of the sweet spot. By adjusting left and right, I'm either gonna adjust the grip, the yoke tune up here, or you. Those are the three things. And so we're gonna dial all those things in to where you're absolutely perfect. So. We cut it probably about in half. So just the, by changing that. Right? Just the grip, yep. So we it it's not gone, but it definitely helped that a little hmm. bit, right? See how that arrow intersects the string almost perfectly where that string loop is at? The string loop? Yep. So if you look from the top down. It's starting to crisp. Yep, that's see how it right. crosses? Yeah, and it crosses about right there. So that's telling me I don't have much adjustment left. Like, again, we could t I could twist that and tune it, but it's gonna, we're putting a little bit of a Band-Aid on it. So what I want you to do this shot is just naturally with your, your hand pressure and your position. So when you got here, this part of your palm is just just a hair too deep. So if you take this hand and you roll it out this way, just like when I tell you guys this, they usually over exaggerate that movement. Think of it as if your hand's here, I want you to move it one degree to the to that side, put more pressure on this edge of the grip and it's gonna, it's gonna clean that up even more there. So see how deep this part of your palm is in and that, mm -hmm. see how that, that part of your palm is slightly hitting that grip? Take your front hand and just roll it with your, your uh, pinky knuckle, just roll it one degree that direction. There you go, perfect. Very, very good. They hit close to the other hole, but now look at that. Yeah, that's like dead center. That's yeah. perfect. So that, that's weird, it almost felt like, it, I mean, it feels like it's getting on the edge of there to where yeah. my. So, and this is just off. looking at where I have everything set to as far as like mm -hmm. center shot, cam lean, everything. This is just you learning your, how your input into the bow is gonna affect that. Yeah. So this is where just now I want you to repeat that shot a couple of times and just kind of feel, okay, that's exactly where my hand's pressure is gonna sit. There you go. See how you rolled that, see how they rolled that palm out? Mm -hmm. That's what caused that left and right right there. Ooh. There we go. That's looking good. Yeah. Look, you can even see how my veins are twisted. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Them. Like the helical. Yeah. Well, that looks good. So that's not going to be moving or shifting. Um, leveled up. So the only thing we can do now is just double check third axis. And I always tell guys to check it to, to their hand. Mm -hmm. There's some vices and stuff, but I'm not a fan of those personally because I feel like the two things that affect third axis is either riser flex or bow hand torque. But we're gonna step into our other room here. We have a little uh, rope hanging from the ceiling. We use that as a, a, like a plumb bob, it works mm. perfect. And what we're gonna do, with the, say imagine there's a rope there, you're gonna draw, you're gonna get nice square level, okay? Level the bow. You're gonna level the bow because we know we've double checked this. Yeah. First, second axis is perfect, right? You're gonna get level here. And then what I like to do is using my, um, the pins it's actually a very accurate way to do it you're going to angle up as high as you can on that rope and your goal is to try to keep the pins perfectly on the rope and when you do that if that bubble stays in the middle we know that your third axis is right there but if the bubble if i'm at full draw like this and you see how i can't the bow or twist it this way mm -hmm. you'll see that bubble dance left and right that's how we'll make a third axis adjustment Dead on, dude. In the middle? Cool. Mm -hmm. So that's a great starting point for third axis. Um, and, you know, guys, any guys that's ever bought a site from us, double check that at home for sure. Because mm -hmm. you can either use it, some guys will use a door jam. Like if you put a level up and go, okay, yeah. that door jam's perfect. It should be the same thing. If you were to draw back and know that door jam's level and angle down, 
it should be the same as if you angle up. That mm -hmm. bubble should stay in the middle regardless if you're doing up or downhill now. So good, man. A lot of you that are watching are probably watching us go through this step by step and realizing maybe uh, either doing it yourself or doing it at the uh, place you went to, they didn't take all these steps. Without taking all these proper steps and leveling it and getting everything right, you're never gonna be consistent, especially out to distance. So the first time I did this whole walkthrough with Jeremiah, I was like, I've never done this. This all makes sense why I can't get like a really, really good group uh, further and further away. So it's kind of crazy when you see it all put together and you realize the last bow you might've got, someone just screwed things on and handed it to you and said, good luck. Yeah. That's never gonna work. Yeah, we see, we see that a lot. And it's frustrating, I, you know, I tell guys, archery is already a hard enough sport. We try to make it at least as easy as possible with the equipment side, you know. The only thing you gotta do is go sneak back in the range and get this thing close there at 20. Start by 20, move the pins with 40 and 50, then yep. we can start talking about my sight tape. Yep, exactly. Awesome, well, okay. thanks again, man. Yeah, appreciate it. Welcome. You guys uh, definitely go check out Wild Arrow. They do have a website. Yep. They also have their social media accounts that we'll put in the description box. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the new bow build. This is the RX-3 by Hoyt. I'll be shooting this with my Easton Skittle arrows, my uh, <laughs> injections. So yeah. it's going to be a good season. I'm excited to get this set up and really get it dialed in and start shooting it. Right on. So thanks a lot for your help. Yep. We'll see you guys on the next video.